everyone it's a part 2 of an asp.net core web ap tutorial in this video let us see how to create a new asp.net core web ap project we are going to use visual studio 2017 version so let us open that select file new and create a project In this new project window, select this is the C short under the install templates and it is going to create .NET Core project. So let us select .NET Core here. In the middle pane, select this ASP.NET Core web application and give the name as BBAP for CRUD process. So let us name it as BBAP product.api so let us click on ok on this window I am going to use the ASP.NET Code 2.1 SDK framework so let me select that from this drop down and select API here and let us configure for HTTPS later. Click on OK. This is an web API code auto generated by R Visual Studio. Let us explore and understand this one. Notice within this controller folder, we have values controller. Let us open that. Is the web API uses the controllers and the controllers in web API or the classes that derive from the controller base class. This controller base class provides many properties and methods that are useful for handling HTTP requests. And if you see here, the Microsoft.asp.net code.mdc namespace provides attributes that can be used to configure the behavior of the API. And also the action methods. For example, this route specifies the URL pattern for the controller or action. And this HTTP GET identifies an action that supports HTTP GET action work. This API controller attribute can be applied to the controller class to enable some API specific behaviors. Notice in the values controller class, we have the methods like get, post, put, and delete. We have two overloaded versions of the get method, one without any parameters and the other with id parameter. Both of these methods responds to the get HTTP work depending on whether the id parameter is specified in URL or not. So when we run the application, we get this output as a result, value 1 and value 2. Let us understand what is going on here. The default route starts with the word API and then the forward slash and then the name of the controller. Here, the name of the controller is values. So if we use the URI like this, then the web API is going to look for the controller with the name values and the word controller in our project. So we are having the values controller. Now the browser is issuing a GET request. So it maps to the get method of our values controller. So the get method in the values controller is returning values 1 and 2, which is what we see in the output. 
as we are not passing any parameters it took the first get method we have another overloaded version of the get method which takes the id parameter so remember with the default route the id parameter is optional so that is the reason we are able to call the get method with the without the id parameter let us specify the id parameter in our uri let us specify some id parameter press enter now it takes the get method with the parameter in the values controller is called now the output clearly shows that it calls the get method with the id parameter in the values controller as it returns elbat application this local host colon port number might be a domain name for example w3schools.com or google.com etc actually it looks for the values controller as of now let us specify some other controller name which is not actually present for example like product so that it will looks for the product controller actually we are not having any product controllers in our default project so let us change the controller name as product click on enter either the requested uri was not found that is the http error 404 as we are not having any product controller in our project In our upcoming video, let us see about this rest of the actions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let us see in our next video about the HTTP terms and concepts.